In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a 100% no-nonsense guide to customizing shoes in 2024. Let's get right into it. When I first started customizing shoes like two years ago, I looked to one of these videos where it's like a complete guide on how to start, what materials you may need. So I figured why not do my own spin on it and show you guys all the materials that I have and what got me started and everything like that. If anybody was like me at home wanting to customize shoes but didn't know where to start, looking for a, a guide on where to get started, a tutorial on all the tools that you need to get started, then to look no further than right here at Be Unique Customs. So, first off, to get this tutorial started, I'm going to walk you through all these tools and what they all do and everything like that. So, first off, this is Angela's leather paint. It's super clutch. It's literally the best shoe paint that you can find, probably. Like, I mean, every customizer I've ever seen is using these paints right here. All right, and now we got the heat gun. This thing is super clutch because when you're trying to customize shoes, there's nothing worse than waiting for a paint to dry. So this thing right here will dry that paint in like 30 seconds. It's the greatest thing ever. It's pretty much just a concentrated blow dryer. It's like way hotter. It dries the paint super quick. I'm sure you guys are probably wondering what this big machine is. This right here, every shoe customizer's best friend. It's a cricket. So basically, this is where I go to cut all my stencils out right here on this Cricut. I'll show you guys how to make stencils la later in the video. But yeah, Cricut, super, super big investment and you probably don't need this when you get started because I didn't have it when I first started. When I started making money off of customizing shoes, I used that money to buy a Cricut and it was very worth it and it makes everything so much easier. Here's the brushes right here. I mean, there's like a mixture of everything in here. The only main brushes that I use out of this whole thing, I just got a variety pack, but the main ones that I use are this one, this one, and then the fine detail brush. And then maybe I see myself using this one a lot too, just like a multi-purpose one. But yeah, you could find these at Walmart. Like it doesn't matter what type of brush you get. These are pretty cheap brushes, so michaels has good good selection too this is uh vinyl it's stickable vinyl so basically what this does is you put this into your cricket on a mat and this is what you cut your stencils out of i'll show you more about this later on and then finally the airbrush another thing that is every shoe customizer's best friend that goes along with the cricket you pretty much just put paint inside of this little thingy and then you know airbrush and stuff like that all right the next tool that everybody needs if you're going to start customizing shoes is acetone and a pair of gloves basically what acetone is is it is the most helpful thing ever like before you start any project you want to completely acetone the whole entire shoe on factory shoes like this like air forces there's like a little clear film that kind of weatherproofs the shoe and the acetone gets that off so it makes the paint stick way better if you are handling acetone, obviously a strong acid, so this will dissolve your skin and your fingernails and stuff like that over time. So definitely put on some gloves. And then the next tool is tape. You can find this at Home Depot or Walmart or whatever. And pretty much self-explanatory, it's tape. All right, so the number one thing when I was getting started that I was mainly worried about was paint and what paint to get. Cause there's so much paint out there that is just very misleading and sometimes it doesn't stick the best and like obviously you want to do the best job as you possibly can with the paint and i've never had any issues with angelus right here when i first got started i just got a little variety pack right here it's all these little paints it comes with a bunch of different colors on amazon just to see if i even wanted to continue customizing shoes and everything i went the safe route and got this these cheap little bottles and there's like ones that are sold all together and I'll put that in the link in the description. As I run out, I continue to get bigger ones. I ran out of red paint on this little bottle right here. So I got a bigger one of red. This will hold you over for a long time, these little ones. But yeah. Next thing is Angela's Too Thin. It does not come like this, this dark. I'm just stupid and the caps all look the same. So one day when I was working on a project, I accidentally put the black paint cap onto this one and it completely dyed my tooth in gray so it's about time for me to get a new bottle anyway so but basically what tooth in does is if you're going to use an airbrush or you're painting fabric shoes and stuff it makes your uh paint thinner so that it can run through the airbrush and stuff like that because when you run this type of paint 
it's too thick to go through the airbrush and it doesn't come out of the needle. So that's why you need too thin, mainly. That's the reason why I bought it. But I also found that when I'm painting shoes like Vans, it turns paint like this from a paint to a dye so that it dyes fabric much easier. It goes way smoother. Next thing for the paint is a finish. And I like going with the Angelus Matty Four Coat Finish. This is, this is my third bottle of this and it's actually amazing. Pretty much, I go for the Matty because I don't like that glossy look. This goes over the paint, protects it, and also makes it look matte. So it's not shiny anymore, it's really good. I'll link this in the description as well. This is the best finishing coat, in my opinion. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna be explaining is the acetone. It'll take off the factory finish of the shoe. And also, if you make a mess up with the paint and stuff like that, say i'll explain it i'll just explain it this is how you do it i just take a paper towel put on my gloves obviously and then i just really scrub around the shoe and the area that i'm going to be working on and get that finish off it doesn't seem like you're doing anything because you can't see any progress with this step but trust me it's great and you know when it's coming off when the you can feel it it's hard to explain how it feels but you can feel it and another thing that acetone is really helpful with is, say, you're doing a project, right? Here I am, painting, la la la, painting the Nike sign orange. Oh! Oh no! I messed up. It's the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world. This is another reason why you got acetone right here. is to clean up mess ups like this. Pretty much, just take it, put some acetone on your towel. Now watch, it's like Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Scrub that puppy away. Just like that. It's not gonna come off on the first scrub, but eventually it will completely come up. It's like one of those things where if it's a huge, huge, huge mess up, it's, it's not much you can do about it, but repaint over it with white paint or whatever color the shoe is. So don't be too careless and always tape your shoe and everything, but yes. Acetone is great. As you can see, the mess up is pretty much completely cleaned up. All right, so tape is another thing that's pretty important. This helps This helps a lot with mess ups. It almost completely takes care of them. So if you're worried about messing up, make sure you always tape. And basically, everybody does taping different, but how I tape is I put one big thing over top of it, and then I kind of weasel out the edges here. So as you can see, it shows the edges right there. And say I want to tape the Nike sign off. And I take my little exacto knife here, and then I cut the tape along the line. I'm obviously rushing here a little bit, but you get the gist. Then you want to peel off what you did here. And yeah, I mean, I was rushing a little bit, so it's not the most perfect tape job. And taping is one of the most important things to do. So you want to take your time on it but that's my strategy pretty quick and easy tape job right here this will protect the white part down here when you're uh, painting the Nike sign so if you mess up go over a little bit just peel it up it'll be nice and clean so now I'm gonna explain how I make stencils with the Cricut and everything like that there's a software on um, that you're gonna download when you get your Cricut and it's called um, Cricut design space so you just open that up and it leads you to the screen or whatever. I'm not going to show you how to log in because there's like a tutorial that you get with Cricut on how to log in and set it up and everything. I'm just going to show you how to make stencils. So you click new project up in the top right corner and it leads you to this screen. So there's a lot of different like uh, stock images that you can use through Cricut and stuff like that over 500,000 Cricut images. But I'm going to show you guys how to upload your own. So I'm going to click upload which is down here. And here's a bunch of my different stencils that I've already done, but we're gonna completely start new. Click upload image. So now you're gonna wanna go to Google, and let's see. We'll do, a lot of people like uh, the Louis Vuitton stencils. So you go to look up whatever you want. I just did Louis Vuitton. Then you wanna click on a logo that you're gonna want. So I chose this one, cause it's nice and crispy edges here. And then click save image as. You're gonna wanna go back to your thing, click browse, and there it is right there, open. And there we go. You got your image, now click complex, 
continue. And now you're gonna wanna click on the spots that you want cut out. So if you wanna fill in the background, then delete the background like that by just literally clicking on the background. If not, and you just wanna do the inside, you wanna do Louis V logos all over it and stuff like that, then you're just gonna, gonna wanna click on the inside and cut it out completely. So it looks like this. And then click apply and continue. Cut image, unless you wanna print that cut, but cut image is what usually I'm going for. Then click upload. Now you click on your brand new stencil that you just did, click add to canvas. And here is where we're gonna adjust sizes. Obviously that's way too big. I just mainly use the up and down, you know, grab the corners and size it that way. But you can also come over here if you have exact measurements and put down sizes. So let's just go with one as the width and then 0.729 as the height. All right, so we have that. Then you're gonna wanna, wanna click and make it, right? for any material confirm continue all right now this is when this blue stuff right here comes in so now you're going to want to grab your vinyl stencil paper this is extra grip um stencil paper you can find this at michael's but i'll also link it in the description then you're going to want to cut out a piece for it it was a little bit under one inch over here so i'm just going to cut out a nice little small square with my exacto knife doesn't have to be perfect because the Cricut does most of the work. What I use to cut on is a self-healing cutting mat. I'll link that in the description as well if you guys need it. And then you stick it on this mat right here. You can find these at Michael's too in the Cricut section, but I'll link it in the description as well. And then you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna stick it on there. Uh, this is optional. You don't need this. I like using it. Get it nice and flat on there. Makes life so much easier. And then you're gonna wanna come to your Cricut and then click this arrow, push it in, and then press go, and it does the rest. So we'll be back when that's done cutting. The Cricut is done cutting now. Then you just kinda remove the stencil, come back over to your workshop, take out this piece right here, the LV part. So that actually becomes a stencil now. There you go. Now you got a Louis V stencil. So for the heat gun and the airbrush, they're kind of more self-explanatory, but I can definitely make a video about everything I do in the process of making a shoe, like a more in-depth tutorial on how I paint, my preferences on like layering, how to use the airbrush on stencils and stuff like that. I can do one of those videos where I completely explain every little detail, but this tutorial was mainly just for how to get set up, what tools you need, stuff like that. So just let me know in the comments if you guys want a more in-depth tutorial on exactly how to customize shoes. I can literally go get a shoe and make it and customize it directly dedicated for this video. I can do that if you guys would like. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in. I hope this helped. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment and I will answer those as soon as possible. Or you can DM me on Instagram. All my socials will be at the end of this video. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. Can't take lost in my thoughts, this ain't one B, I think you tripping, yeah, yeah. No need to fit, so I just use the music for my healing. I drop some heat, I'm going up, and it's just the beginning. Late at night, I talk to God, forgive me for all of my sins. My brother say I'm up, so you know that I mean that I'm winning, yeah. yeah.